Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math tutorial video for you guys. Today we're looking at lesson 6.5 and in lesson 6.5 we will be creating equivalent fractions by looking for common denominators. So in order to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators, we have to find a way to make it so that our fraction or the value of our fraction does not change, but that our denominators are the same. So in this lesson, we are going to learn how to do that. The book presents a couple of different strategies. The main strategy that I'm going to focus on in this video and in class is using what we learn about prime factoring numbers to create those common denominators so that we can then create equivalent decimals. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples in that and we are only going to be working on that today. We're not at the point yet where we're adding or subtracting fractions. We are just getting our minds ready and finding the strategies that we need so that when we are given two fractions to add and they have unlike denominators, we know what to do to fix that so that we can add or subtract them. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples then I'll come back give you some closing thoughts and then we will be done for the day all right today's lesson is going to focus on using prime factorization to find common denominators between two fractions and then take those common or that common denominator that we find to create equivalent fractions so the two fractions that we're looking at right now are 5 eighths and 7 twentieths and right now they have two unlike denominators and we want to find a common denominator for them. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take the denominators of each and we are going to prime factor them. There goes my camera, there it is. Out of focus, in focus. Um, sorry. So we're going to take the number 8, I am going to prime factor 8, so I'm going to take 8. I know that two factors of 8 are 4 times 2. I know that 2 is a prime number, so I'm going to circle it because there's nothing else I can do with that. I'm going to continue to factor 4 using 2 times 2, and those are two prime numbers, so I'm going to circle those. And I'm going to make sure that I represent the number 8 as a product of its prime factors, so that is going to be 8, and it was 2 times 2 times 2, and I'm going to need that in just a second. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to prime factor 20. I'm going to use the factors 4 times 5. And I know that 5 is prime, so I'm going to circle that one. I'm going to continue to prime factor 4. That is 2 times 2. And 2 is prime, so I'm going to circle these. And then my prime factors, or 20 written as a product of its prime factors, would end up being... 2 times 2 times 5, okay? So that's step one. Then you want to take your list of prime factors, and then you want to see if you can find common prime factors between both the factor tree of 8 and the factor tree of 20. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase all this so I have more space, but that's step one. As you look at your denominators, you prime factor them down, and then you make a list of their factors. And I just realized you can't see these factors over here, but I'll rewrite them for you. So just one second. So once you have prime factored down both your denominators, and you've written your denominators as as products of their prime factors, you need to look at the list of both the prime factors for your denominators and see if you compare them up. So here was my list of factors for 8, 2 times 2 times 2, and my list of factors for 20, 2 times 2 times 5. And I can immediately see that here is a pair of 2s, so I'm going to group those together. Here's another pair of 2s, so I'm going to group those together. And then these two are just kind of lonely factors out there by themselves because they don't have um, someone to pair up with, so they will be left alone. Once you've identified any prime factors they have in common, then you're going to write out your prime factor list or the product of all these common prime factors as well as the lonely ones that are just floating out there all by themselves. So I would write this as, let me use my purple, I would write this as 2, which represents that pair of 2s, times 2, which represents that pair of 2s, times 2, which is the lonely 2, times 5, okay? Now once you've done that, in order to find out what your common denominator is going to be, you would then multiply this out and that would be your common denominator. So I know that 2 times 2 is 4 
And then I'm going to rewrite the rest just to stay organized. I don't want to be rushing or overlooking a step. So I just do this one step at a time. Then I know that four times two is eight. So I'm going to write out the rest. And then I know that eight times five is 40. So 40 would be my CD or my common denominator. That is what I need the denominator to be in the two original fractions that I was given, which was 5 eighths and 7 twentieths. So I'm going to erase the board and put those fractions back up to show you what you would do to create equivalent fractions. Just remembering that the common denominator has to be 40. So our original fractions were 5 eighths. and 7 twentieths. Those were the two fractions I was given to work with. And now I know that my common denominator has to be 40. So what that means is I need to now use multiplication on both of my denominators so that they turn into 40. And the rule is whatever you do to the denominator must then be done to the numerator. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at 5 eighths and I'm going to ask myself, well, what would I have to multiply 8 by so that I get a product of 40? And I would have to multiply 8 by 5. And since I'm multiplying the denominator by 5, I'm going to go ahead and multiply my numerator by 5. And then I'm going to multiply those two out, and that's going to give me my equivalent fraction. And I'm going to go ahead and erase 7 twentieths right now because it's in the way. So 5 times 5 is going to be 25, and then 8 times 5 is going to be 40. So that means an equivalent fraction to 5 eighths, which was my original fraction, is going to be 25 fortieths. If I ate 5 eighths of a pizza, that is the same thing as me eating 25 fortieths of a pizza. So that is what we would do for 5 eighths. 5 eighths turns into 25 fortieths. Now we're going to do the same thing for 7 twentieths. So I'm going to do the same with my second fraction, 7 twentieths. I know that my common denominator was 40, which means my denominator has to be 40, and I'm going to have to use some multiplication to make that happen. So I'm going to go ahead and just extend this fraction bar, put my multiplication signs down because I know that's going to be happening. And now I'm going to ask myself, what will I multiply 20 by so that I do get 40? I'm going to multiply 20 times 2. I also know that the rule is whatever I do to the denominator must be done to the numerator, so I'm going to multiply 7 times 2. And then to find that equivalent fraction, I'm just going to go ahead and do the multiplication. 7 times 2 is 14, and 20 times 2 is 40. So that tells me that an equivalent fraction to 7 twentieths is going to be 14 fortieths. If I eat 7 twentieths of a pizza, that is the same thing as me eating 14 fortieths of that same pizza. Okay, here's one more example. We're looking at the fractions 2 ninths and 1 fifteenth. Remember, we're not adding these, we're not subtracting these, we're just going to create equivalent fractions that have like denominators. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at our denominators 9 and 15, and we are going to prime factor those. Just in the interest of space, I'm going to erase both of these and just deal with one at a time. So I'm going to start with 2 ninths, or actually the number 9 from 2 ninths, and I'm going to prime factor that. I know that 3 times 3 is 9, and both of these are prime numbers, so that, that one's easy. So for the number 9, my list of factors are going to be 3 times 3. Then I'm going to prime factor out the denominator from the second fraction, which was 1 15th. So I'm going to take 15, and I'm going to prime factor that, and I know that 3 times 5 equals 15 and lucky for me both of these are prime numbers so I'm going to circle them there's nothing else for me to do so my list of factors for 15 would be 3 times 5 and then I'm done the next step once you've prime factored your denominators is you're looking for common factors that you can pair up from your two factor list so here's a pair of threes so that's going to count as one and then we have the little lonely three and the lonely five out there that aren't paired up so they have to just be left alone. So this is going to be 
three times three, so the first three comes from there, the second three is coming from there, times five. And in order to find out what my common denominator is gonna have to be, let me rewrite this so that you can see it. Three times three times five. And in order to find out what my common denominator is gonna have to be, I'm gonna multiply that out. I know that three times three is nine, and nine times five is 45. So that is gonna be my common denominator. 45 is gonna to have to be the denominator that I use for both fractions so that I can create my equivalent fractions. So let's keep that in mind and then go back to our original fractions. So the first fraction we were dealing with was 2 ninths, okay? Right now my fraction has a denominator of nine, but I know that I need to change that denominator to 45. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend this out put my multiplication sign because I know that's going to happen and I'm going to ask myself nine times what is going to be 45 and I know that's going to be five. The rule is whatever you do to the denominator must be done to the numerator and then I'm going to multiply to find my equivalent fraction. Two times five is ten and nine times five is 45. So that tells me that an equivalent fraction to two ninths which was the original fraction, is going to be 10 45ths or 10 over 45. 2 ninths represents the same amount as 10 over 45. So that's my first fraction that I've created an equivalent fraction for. The second fraction that we had was 1 15th. 1 15th. And we know the denominator has to be 45, so I'm gonna be using some multiplication. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my multiplication sign there. And then I'm gonna ask myself, what would I multiply 15 by to get 45? 15 is one of those nice landmark numbers, and I know that 15 plus 15 is 30, and 30 plus another 15 is going to be 45. So I know that 15 times three is 45. And whatever I do to the denominator must be done to the numerator. So I'm going to multiply 1 times 3. And then to find my equivalent fraction, I'm going to multiply that out. 1 times 3 is 3. And 15 times 3 is 45. And therefore, an equivalent fraction to 1 15th is going to be 3 over 45. 1 15th of something is the, same, is the same amount as 3 45ths of something. And I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but in this lesson, we're still not worried about having simplified fractions or reduced fractions, if you guys are familiar with that. All we're really focused on is creating equivalent fractions that have like denominators. So those are your three examples that I have to offer today. I'm going to give you some closing thoughts, and then we'll wrap the video up. All right, so we've gone over some examples on how you can find a common denominator and how you take that common denominator to create equivalent fractions. Again, remember, when we get to the point where we're adding and we're subtracting our fractions, we can't do that unless our denominators are the same. So the purpose of this lesson was to show you how do you fix that problem when you're given two fractions to add or subtract, but they don't have like denominators. So when you're looking for that common denominator, the first thing that you need to do is take the denominator in each of your original fractions, express them as products of their prime factors or express, express them as a product of prime factors and then in each list of prime factors from each of your denominators you're looking for factors they have in common counting those one time that they appear and then you're looking for any additional number and then you're multiplying those out and then whatever the product of those are that represents the common denominator that you're going to need to use to create equivalent fractions so I hope that those examples were helpful for you and my explanation was clear. If it was, please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe so you always know when I upload new videos onto my YouTube channel for my class. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.